image this is what the image originally looked like and you can see that it's kind of a small crop in comparison to the final image that's because I did an expansion on this photo which I will show you how to do to expand an image you go to image and then you go to canvas size creating an expansion is a lot like creating a panoramic so it's the easiest if you take all of your pictures on a tripod and then you blend them together on Photoshop I don't always create expansions in my pictures, normally I'll just crop the picture or keep it how it is. But creating expansions has a few benefits, especially for printing, because you're combining, you know, two or three or however many pictures into one. So that makes the overall image a lot larger, therefore the picture will print with really clear and great quality and you could print the image a lot larger than if it was one single picture. So after creating our expansion, the next step, as you can see, is to add on the flying hair, which I took from a different picture where I was flipping my hair for the camera. Once we have the hair in place, the next thing I'm going to do is find as many pictures as I can where the fabric looks really cool, and I'm just going to select those fabric areas copy and paste it onto the main image we're building off of and just like a puzzle piece I'm gonna put those selections around the subject in the main picture we're building off of like you can see here and I'm just gonna move them around and mess with them a little bit and kind of find the best place where those different fabric selections should go one of my favorite tools that I'm using right now is the warp tool to access the warp tool, you transform your selection, then you go to edit, transform, then warp. And you can see the warp tool brings up a box with all these different points that you can just kind of drag around and mess around with. And it's just a different way of manipulating the fabric. So you can stretch it out, the fabric, you can make it bigger, you can move it around. And if you make any changes that you don't like after you hit enter on the warp tool, you create a layer mask and then you erase away from the changes that you made. And now I'm just kind of cleaning up the image a little bit. I'm adding some fabric in some areas around my arm. I'm also removing it a little bit in places where I don't want the fabric to appear. So I'm speeding this process up a little bit. You can see that I'm painting the layer of the fabric back in where I want it to appear and then I'm going to reduce the paintbrush to 50% on opacity and fill and I'm just going to paint over my feet so that it doesn't completely cover my feet but you can still see my feet showing through the fabric. So I'm going to continue to play around with the fabric selections, just kind of erase away the areas where I don't want them to appear, use the warp tool and put them in place. So this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like after before, after. So now that we've merged our fabric selections onto one layer, I'm painting away with the 50% brush at certain areas of the fabric where I want the background to show through a little bit more. Now I'm bringing in a different arm onto the main picture and I'm just compositing that onto my body because before I didn't have a right arm and it was looking a little weird. And finally it's time for the sky. So I actually took a picture of the sky at a much faster shutter speed which brings out the details a lot more brought the sky onto the main image and changed the blending mode to multiply when you change the blending mode to multiply it makes the sky blend in into all the little details of the hair in the background as you can see as I'm just clicking the layer on and off and now I'm just using the dodge tool to brighten up my face and my body the next step is my favorite part where I change the colors of the picture so I just went to my selective color adjustment layers and right now I'm on the whites and the yellows and the blues and the magentas and the reds and I'm just kind of altering the cyans, magentas, yellows, and blacks of the picture. I'm also adding some curve layers as you can see. My face and body are still a little dark so I just selected my face and chest and I brightened it up and just using some curve layers to kind of make my skin tone a little bit more yellow, a little bit more red. Bringing in some textures after making the texture black and white, I brought it over the whole image and then I create a layer mask on the texture, erase away at certain areas where I don't want the texture to appear like on the fabric, on my skin, and my hair because that's not the look I'm going for. After adjusting the colors a little bit more, now I'm creating a vignette to make the corners of the picture just a little bit darker and I'm going to add a small vignette on the very bottom of the picture 
And I'm also going to select the bottom of the picture like I'm doing right now and I'm going to add a little bit of a blur effect just to add a little bit more of, of a depth of field to kind of look like this image was shot with a low aperture. So this is what the final image looks like. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can get an up close look. And I think the most important thing to keep in mind is these pictures always start off very ordinary looking. It's really the Photoshop that makes a huge difference. Photoshop is just like digital makeup. You're adding makeup onto a picture and making it come alive. So when you see pictures like this, don't feel intimidated. Don't say, oh my gosh, I can't do that. How do you do that? Because that was the attitude I had three years ago when I first started taking pictures. And then, you know, you just kind of do some Photoshop and you play around with it for a little while and then it really comes together. If you decide to make a picture based off this tutorial, please send it to me or tag me in it because I'd really love to check it out. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope I was able to help you guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you're a little bit more inspired. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me on Facebook or add me as a friend. And I would love to help you out with any questions you may have. I know I only have a few tutorials on my channel, but I plan to come out with a lot more. So also let me know if you have any requests. And don't forget to subscribe so you can check back for more tutorials that I'll have for you in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.